Okay. Thank you for the introduction, um, and thank you for, com uh, for coming to attend my talk. I'm Fawad, a PhD student at USC. And today I'm going to talk about Car Map, which is a system that enables fast 3D feature map updates for automobiles. This work was done in collaboration with Hong Shu, Ray Eels, Fan Bai, and my advisor, Ramesh Govindan. Autonomous driving requires the ability of a vehicle to accurately localize itself with respect to its surroundings. Key enablers of accurate localization in self-driving cars are three-dimensional maps of the environment, so-called 3D maps. 3D maps, as shown here, are made up of entities called features that have a one-to-one -one correspondence with objects in the physical world. To localize, vehicles compare what they see through their sensors with features in the map to triangulate their positions. Vehicles use depth perception sensors like LIDARs, radars, and stereo cameras to see the world in 3D at different frames per second. And vehicles use these sensors for both mapping and localization. A number of companies like Waymo, Uber, and Lyft are racing to build three-dimensional maps for their self-driving cars. And to do this, they use fleets of expensive sensor-loaded vehicles to collect map data, and then they process it offline into a 3D map. However, the environment changes continuously, and these changes render maps stale, and stale maps must be updated. Short timescale events such as road or lane closures due to constructions or traffic accidents or maybe double parked vans can cause the set of features in the map to be different from what the vehicle sees through its sensors. In the case of a traffic accident, we compared the localization errors shown on the y-axis for two vehicles, one with an outdated map and another with an updated map, as they drove through the accident scene with time on the x-axis. The vehicle with the outdated map shown by the blue line is unable to position itself and hence has a very high localization error, whereas the vehicle with the updated map shown by the red line positions itself accurately and hence has a low localization error. However, map update costs are prohibitively expensive. A startup called DeepMap charges as much as $5,000 for mapping a single kilometer. To this end, we ask ourselves the question, what is a scalable way to build an up-to-date 3D map that enables near real-time updates? Keeping in view the fact that increasingly vehicles today and those of the future will be equipped with depth perception sensors and wireless radios, we believe a promising approach to solving this problem is to crowdsource map collection and updates to vehicles. For this work, we focus on maps generated by cameras and leave LIDARs to future work. In such a scenario, all vehicles will sense the environment using their depth perception sensors and then send their perceived maps to a cloud service. The cloud service will merge all maps from different vehicles into a single 3D map. And other vehicles can then download this map to accurately localize themselves. However, to do this, there are three main challenges that we must surmount. To generate 3D maps, autonomous vehicles use SLAM algorithms. SLAM algorithms use 3D frames from 3D sensors to localize a vehicle and at the same time generate a 3D map. However, the size of even the most sparse representation of these maps, called feature maps, is very large and requires an order of magnitude higher bandwidth than what LTE has today. We mapped the USC campus using a popular feature SLAM algorithm called ORB-SLAM, and at 30 kilometers per hour, we required a sustained upload bandwidth of 100 megabits per second. Secondly, on the road, there are moving and parked vehicles. If we collect a map on a busy road during a rush hour, and then use the map to localize a vehicle at a quieter time, localization will fail because we won't be able to find the features that belong to the vehicles in the top image. And this impacts localization accuracy. We call the collective set of dynamic and semi-dynamic features as environmental transients. Lastly, as different vehicles explore new regions and sense updates to existing regions, we need to integrate these updates into a single 3D map. To surmount these challenges, we embody our contributions in the form of a single system called Car Map. To deal with the large size of feature maps, we find a lean map representations 
a lean map representation of these maps that uses the minimal possible set of features required for accurate localization. Secondly, to remove environmental transients, we use a dynamic object filter that is powered by semantic segmentation. Lastly, to keep the map updated, we use two map update algorithms. The first one robustly stitches maps collected from unmapped regions, whereas the second one uses an efficient diff operation to update existing map regions. As much as I want to talk about this, but due to the limitation of time, you're encouraged to read the paper for more details. Now moving on to the first problem of the large size of feature maps. But before I do, we have to develop some background. A feature in a feature map can be any point of interest, such as the points shown here. It can be the corner of a car, the corner of a house, a fire hydrant, or maybe some crack engraved in the road. Every feature is defined by its 3D position along with a signature or a descriptor that shows how it is related to its surroundings. More precisely, the descriptor is a vector that describes the intensity values of pixels around the feature. As a vehicle traverses the environment, it continuously perceives it through its 3D sensors and generates 3D frames. From these frames, every K frame, called a key frame, sl SLAM saves a snapshot of the environment that it perceives into the 3D map. And this snapshot consists of all the features extracted in that keyframe, and they're called keyframe features. Now, keyframe features are monitored for multiple keyframes, and the most stable of these features are integrated into the map as landmarks, and they're called map features. Both map features and keyframe features are defined by their 3D position and their signatures. Using SLAM, vehicles can localize themselves using their 3D sensors and their feature map. And to do this, SLAM matches features present in the feature map with those perceived by the vehicle in the current frame. This is called feature matching. Feature matching is vital for both localization and mapping. More generically, feature matching refers to the process of finding correspondences between two data sets, such as the two images shown here. In this instance, we are matching features in the map shown by the top image with features that the vehicle sees shown by the bottom image using their descriptors to find the position of the vehicle in the map. Since feature matching is so important, SLAM's, SLAM builds different data structures for accurate and fast matching. These data structures include the feature index and the map feature index that we will discuss in detail later on. Using the set of matching features, SLAM techniques can estimate the pose of the vehicle in the map. After pose estimation, the vehicle can add keyframes to the map, and this has already been discussed before. Now, if we look at the components in the feature map, it consists of keyframe features from which map features are formed, and for accurate and fast matching, feature matching, SLAM builds a feature index and a map feature index. Now, given this diagram, if I ask you what is the minimal possible representation of the feature map, you'll say keyframe features because everything else can be reconstructed from it. However, even with keyframe features, the sustained upload bandwidth is 27 megabits per second, which is still beyond what LTE has today. At higher speeds, this increases because the vehicle sees more of the environment. In order to enable near real-time upload, CarMap takes a rather non-intuitive approach. CarMap stores only map features and removes everything else to get a lean representation. Using map features, CarMap can reconstruct keyframe features and the two indices, but the important exception here is that uh, keyframe features in CarMap consist of only 4% of the features that exist in an actual SLAM map. And with map features, we bring the sustained upload bandwidth to approximately one megabits per second or less, which is well within LTE limits today. However, since we remove so many features from the map, vehicles have much fewer features to match with in the map, and this makes feature matching fundamentally more difficult. To solve this problem, we make, we make feature matching more robust using position hints. Going back to feature matching, recall that SLAM builds two different data structures for fast and accurate matching. One of these data structures is called a feature index that is used for coarse grain matching. More precisely, given a 3D frame, the feature index quickly gives a set of possible locations uh, that can be the location of this 3D frame in the map. And this matching is based on image feature similarity. 
To see how this works, in SLAM, suppose we want to localize this 3D frame in the feature map. To do this, SLAM extracts features from the 3D frame, and each feature is defined by its feature signature or by its descriptor. To make matching faster, SLAM discretizes or bins the descriptors into visual words based on a dictionary calculated offline. Similar descriptors are assigned to the same word, such as the top and bottom one. Each 3D frame can thus be compactly represented by a histogram of words found in that frame. All keyframes in the feature map are also represented by word, uh, word histograms. Thus, SLAM performs histogram matching between the 3D frame and the keyframes in the map, and this gives a set of identical keyframes that can be the potential location of the 3D frame in the map. Now, in SLAM algorithms, these histograms are made up of keyframe features. But remember, in our case, CarMap removes all the keyframe features and only keeps the map features for, to enable real-time updates. So we have 30 times fewer features, and with 30 times fewer features to match with, this results in localization failure and false positives. So we can conclude image feature similarity is not robust with sparse features. And to make this more robust, we use position hints. And this is based on the insight that vehicles, unlike indoor robots, will have GPS and inertial sensors. To explain how feature matching works in car map, suppose we want to localize this 3D frame in the feature map. To do this, car map maintains a global KD tree of all keyframes in the map and uses it to search for all keyframes that are within a specific radius of the vehicle cur vehicle's current position. And this gives us a set of spatially closed keyframes. Given the set of spatially closed keyframe, CarMap finds the keyframes that most closely resemble the current 3D frame based on image similarity. And in addition to that, CarMap also picks the keyframes that are the closest neighbors of the 3D frame spatially. This forms a set of candidate keyframes that are the potential locations of the 3D frame in the map. To find the exact location, CarMap transforms the 3D frame to each one of these location, uh, locations and then performs fine-grained matching as well. Now, fine-grained matching in SLAM also depends on image feature similarity and single keyframe matching, and this is not robust. To solve this, CarMap matches features based on their 3D positions rather than image feature similarity and matches features from multiple frames. This is also based on the insight that feature positions are robust to temporal and scene changes as compared to their, their descriptors. Please find the details of this in the paper. Moving on to remove environmental transients, CarMap uses a dynamic object filter. We call that environmental transients of a map built from the top image cannot be found in the bottom image, and this results in low localization accuracy. To solve this, we use semantic segmentation, which are deep neural networks that assign a label to every pixel or point in an image that tells us what type of object the pixel belongs to, like a car, vegetation, or maybe the road surface. So before deciding which map features to add to the map, CarMap uses semantic segmentation to classify features into sta static and transient categories, and as a result, it only adds static features to the map. However, semantic segmentation pipelines have low accuracy and low throughput. And to solve these two problems, CarMap uses a robust labeling and resource-aware algorithm for segmentation. Please find details of this in the paper. We extensively evaluate CarMap using end-to-end -end experiments and micro-benchmarks. But for now, we'll only discuss the ability of CarMap to do real-time updates and its robustness to spatial and temporal changes. For the first experiment, we drove a vehicle around our campus as it generated and uploaded map updates to a cloud service. The cloud service would integrate these map updates into its map and then send map updates back to the vehicle. We uploaded map updates every 10 seconds and we observed that the end-to-end -end delay in map updates is only 0.6 seconds. What this means is that a change in the environment can be sensed and sent to all vehicles within less than one second. Secondly, we evaluated the ability of CarMap to build maps that can be used across different tra traffic conditions. We build a map in a dynamic scene and use the map to localize vehicles in the same dynamic scene and in a static scene. 
For comparison, we used OrbSlam, which is a SLAM algorithm, and QuickSketch, which is another crowdsourced map building work, but it does not remove dynamic objects. When using the dynamic map in the same dynamic scene, the localization error for car map is 45 times smaller because car map uses and tracks only static features, whereas the other two competing strategies end up using dynamic features. When the dynamic map was used in a static scene, the two competing strategies fail altogether because they cannot find the dynamic features in the static scene, whereas car map thrives because its map consists only of static features and it can find those static features using its robust feature matching. Moreover, the map sizes for car map are 26 times smaller. To evaluate spatial robustness, we build a map in one lane in a freeway and used it to localize vehicles in other lanes. When localizing in the second lane, car map localizes better because it uses position hints instead of image feature similarity, and the same applies for the third and fourth lanes. So to conclude, car map enables fast 3D feature map updates within less than one second, and it generates maps that are robust to spatial and temporal changes. Now this video shows a real-time demo of car map as a vehicle equipped with a laptop and phone generate map updates shown by the top image, and they send them to a cloud service shown by the bottom image. And uh, we have open sourced the code for car map, and you can find it on the link below. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take questions. Hi, Swaran Kumar from Carnegie Mellon. Excellent talk and cool videos. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the mapping part because you spent most of the time talking about localization. Um, what I mean, I know you're subsampling a lot of the frame keyframes, and that makes sense for localization because you still hopefully have enough features to localize. But how do you deal with mapping because you might lose some of the important information you care about, like things that changed in the environment? Um, so the question is um, using the map for other purposes than localization. Yes, if I'm just interested in the broad map for learning about things that have changed in the environment, but maybe has more to do with the stitching together part piece that you didn't have time to talk about. So um, from our experience, the, although we throw away many of the features uh, and we only have map features to use, but even when we are doing stitching, we use uh, the robust feature matching to find the set of matching features. And since we do feature matching in a way which is different from the way SLAM does it, that's why we are able to find those features. But since we throw away so much information, if you use the uh, map for purposes other than localization, you'll have to build other pieces on top of it to make more sense of the uh, sparser features. Thanks. Thank you. I was wondering, uh, what percent of vehicles on the road need to be utilizing this technology for it to be useful? Because you mentioned that it's crowdsourcing. So I imagine when it first gets deployed, there will be very few vehicles and or users can opt out. Yeah, thank you for the question. So um, since we're using um, stereo cameras, and a stereo camera costs around $150 to $200, that means, and uh, we know that vehicles in the future will have these sensors as well. So um, it's not too expensive to install these sensors. But the thing is, the more vehicles you have, the more coverage you have, and the more you'll be able to build uh, an accurate map. But if fewer, uh, fewer vehicles are using it, then uh, the map will not be that accurate. So the more vehicles, the better. Mm. Do you have an idea of the minimum number of vehicles for something useful? Uh, not, not really, not really. Thanks. From UCSD. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just wondering, so you're using um, GPS priors for keyframe matching, right? So did you compare your work as to like, so in some places GPS can be pretty bad. So I just wanted to understand like how your feature matching um, performance changes with change in GPS priors and other factors, yeah. So I, think that's a, yeah I think that's a great question and uh, we get this question a lot. So the thing is we're not using GPS to aid our localization. The only thing we're doing with GPS is we get a large boundary around the vehicle's current position. So we're just scoping the search. 
So the boundary we take is around 50 meters. And uh, there's a previous paper in Mobisys 2018, which showed that the highest error you can get with GPS in downtown areas, which are the worst areas, is around 45 meters. Okay. So we take that into account. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's thank the speaker.